Hi, this is Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I've got a fun watercolor look technique to share with you that I used to make this card with Combing Camellia. Let me set this aside and we'll get started. For today's card, we're going to use the Combing Camellia stamp set. You can find this at the back of the January-February 2022 celebration brochure. And I've got a piece of Knight of Navy. And normally, I start with my main stamping, but today I'm going to start with my sentiment stamping. So I've got my sentiment, and it's masked. I've uh, used my anti-static bag and inked with Versamark. And now let's peel off my washi tape and see if we can stamp this kind of straight. That looks centered-ish. Okay. And then... We're going to use a piece of scrap paper and sprinkle on some basic white, basic white, some white stampin' emboss powder. Let's give this a little bit of a flick. It's humid here today, so I've got a few extra grains that want to stick to my cardstock. Okay, and put this out of the way. and grab my heat tool and heat it up. And I'm going to heat from behind so that I blow less of those unheated grains of embossing powder around. Okay. Let's take my paper snips, and we're just going to cut this off of here and get this out of the way. We'll even that up later. And then next, I've got a piece of Coastal Cabana and the large flower image from Combing Camellia. I'm going to ink that with basic gray Now this is a distinctive stamp, which means that there's lots and lots of little detail on there. And just give this a little bit of a turn. And then I'm going to rub all over to make sure that I transfer as much of that detail as possible. Okay. And now we're ready for our watercolor pencil technique. We're going to be using the watercolor pencils assortment one that can be found in the annual catalog. And I've got my basic white, whisper white uh, pencil. And let me zoom in here and we'll have a little less chance perhaps of getting the back of my head. And I'm going to start with the leaf here. And I'd like to take it a section at a time. And we're going to color that with the um, white pencil. And then I've got my Old Olive and Granny Apple Green um, Stampin' Right markers. And I'm going to color over this. Okay, and then I want to add a little bit of that old olive in here. And then I've got, let me just take the um, 
bullet tip and we're going to give this some veins across here. Okay. And then let's color in this piece. And go with my granny apple green. And then I'm going to give this a shading line with that bullet tip. You can use an additional finger here to help get in there. And then let's color on back. And I'm going to color back in here with my old olive. And then while that's wet, I'm going to stroke in just a little bit of granny apple green to brighten it. And then we're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to come in here with my white pencil and go across this stem. Now I have to share uh, my thank you to Joe Blackman, who shared uh, this technique in the demonstrator planning place and her card made me want to try it right away and then come share it with you. So I've got my Mossy Meadow Stampin' Write marker. And I'm going to switch to my bullet tip so that I have just a little more control on my shading. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to the brush and add just a little bit of more in. Okay, so that's my stem. And then I'm going to complete the rest of the leaves. Same kind of idea as I did here. And I'll be right back to work on the flowers. Okay. So leaves are finished, and now we're going to move on to our flowers. And let's start with this one right here in the center. And the same thing, I'm going to use my white pencil. And I like to work one um, petal at a time. I'm going to put on Blushing Bride as my base color using my Stampin' Write marker. And then I'm going to come in with my polished pink and a blender pen and pick up some of that and start down here at the bottom and brush this up in to the petal. I want my deeper color at the bottom and then just let that blend out there. And then let's do another petal here. So starting with my white pencil
And then my Blushing Bride marker. And then take my blender pen Okay, and just adding layers of color. You can come back a, a second or a third time. And I'm going to keep working around this flower and I'll be back once it's done. So with the first round of pencil and marker and blender pen on the flowers, we're ready to add the centers and then some detail. So I'm going to go in to the center here and color that with the white uh, marker uh, pencil. And then I've got my Bumblebee Stampin' Write marker. Now the Bumblebee is part of the 2020-2022 Stampin' Write markers, the end colors. And let's see, let's go in here on this one. And that will help us seeing where we need some additional uh, detail. So I can see here that I need to come down a little further, closer to that center. And I'm doing that with the polished pink and the blender pen. And I need to get in right here. along that edge of the one petal that you just see the top of. And then the same thing, I need to come in here. The camellias at my mother's house as I grew up, we had a beautiful bush that if the frost didn't uh, get it, um, bloomed right by our screened in porch and it was the flowers were bright and and vibrant and i'm just going back in and giving an another little layer of color to some of these places that i want to be a little deeper and that is the trick to do this in stages so that you can see what you've got and then let it, the marker dry a little bit or the blender pen ink dry a little bit and then come back in and add some more color. So I'm going to now come in with this one more time in here and here. And I'm dotting in rather than just giving a all over color so that we can build some layer of color with that. And then finally, I'm going to come in with my Magenta Madness marker. And I want to add some little defining uh, lines with this and I'm using the bullet tip and adding a finger to that so that I can have a really light stroke with it. And let's turn, I'm looking for the division in the, the petals so that We can have just a little bit of uh, more detail here and going to come across the top of that upturned petal. 
And do you see how adding just these little strokes adds a little more life to, to the flowers? And I'm thinking, in fact, I know I have forgotten one flower down at the bottom. And I'm just going to come in here and then grab my blender pen and soften that color just a little bit in there. And let's do this next flower here. And I'm, again, just soft, soft, soft little strokes. And a little bit of zigzag down here at the bottom near this yellow center. And back across this one. And let's see, we want to put in a little bit of detail up in here. And right in here, and I'm going to come in with my blender pen and soften that just a little bit. Okay, and then let's do these petals over here, trying to little zigzag here. Okay, and then I have forgotten this one down here. So we're going to come in and color that with the pencil. And then I've got my blushing bride here. And let's grab that polished pink and then there's another little bit here and by doing this in sections you're letting things dry which is good because the ink is making that watercolor pencil wet and you can layer on the colors and get a better blend, a little more definition. Let's see, there we go with that. And then I do want to come back in here and create that definition beside my leaf there. Okay, so there are my flowers. Let me close up this ink pad, and we're going to add a little more detail to this now. I need to brush out my blender pen and scoop up my pieces over here. And next, I want my gray pencil, and I'm going to come in and kind of scribble lightly around the edges of some of this. To give it a little more definition. Come in here between the flowers and down here. You're not looking to get a hard line. Just create a little bit of shadow where you know that if you were peering back in and around, so we're amping up the shadow that's already there in that distinctive stamp. And 
and it'll help our flowers pop a little bit more by having some of that around them. Okay. Next, I wanna add a couple little details that will make this scene, uh, this bunch of flowers pop a little more. And they look pretty good as they are, but I'm going to take some of my um, white craft ink and a sponge dauber and work my way around the card and I'm just lightening my layer here that we're working with. And for blending purposes with the craft ink, I do prefer the sponge dauber. It's a little sticky and I didn't want to get my blending brush um, to the point where I might have to wash it. And I'm just coming up to the edges of my stamped design. Starting off the edge of the paper each time so that I can get that circular motion going and not just plop down on one area of my cardstock so that I get more of a shading thing going rather than any defining marks. And I'm just coming around the edges and making sure that as I've come on to the edge that I've got ink all the way out to the edge. Okay, so that gives it a little bit of additional visual texture there and softens the Coastal Cabana just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my um, chalk marker and give this some little highlights in here. And I'm just going around the edge and this will, again, uh, give this a little bit of a subtle pop to the To that center stamped edge. Just checking to make sure that I've cleaning my marker off in between and then come on around here. Okay. And then our final little element will be some splatter before we put this card together. So I'm just going to open up my scrap paper and bring in my water painter. And let's squeeze it and get the water going. And then I'm going to pick up some of this basic gray ink and make sure that my brush is good and juicy and start and Add a little bit of splatter around here. Okay. 
and that will take care of that. Let's brush out my water painter. Don't forget to brush those out to get the ink out. And then let's put our card together. So I've got a Knight of Navy card base and a basic white liner for it. And let's just straighten that up a little bit and add this to the inside with multi-purpose glue. And then let's grab my dimensionals for the back of our panel here that we've been working on with the Calming Camellia stamp set. You can find that in my Stampin' Up! store using the link in the description below the video, along with all of the other products I've used today. And then the project sheet for this card will be in next week's newsletter. There's a link to sign up for my newsletter in the description below the video. Okay. And then I've got our sentiment that we stamped at the beginning. And let me find my black Stampin' Dimensionals over here. I think I've buried them, so we're going to use many white Stampin' Dimensionals instead. But before I do that, I've got this piece of basic white that I cut with the uh, painted labels dies, and it just adds a nice little bit of detail behind our stamped sentiment. And I'm going to adhere that, and then I'm going to trim it. So I'm cutting around that scallop and then behind so that it kind of gives us a more centered looking piece. And then let's add these mini dimensionals on the back here. Pop this out of the way. Oops. And straighten this up. And we're just going to put this in right below that little bud there. And there's our Calming Camellia Friend card. Thanks for stopping in today. This was Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker of theartfulinker.com. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your card-making friends. And when you subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell, you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Have a great day. Bye.